Hello everyone, it's Cookies here with turn 32 of EA Vanheim. It's part of the Noob Orange, Noob Orange Lobby. And I've got some pretty big Diplo updates here. So I think last turn I was talking about uh, how Abyssia, Ubar, and myself are going to invade Helheim. Well, <laughs> Abyssia and I decided that Ubar was probably a bigger threat in terms of throne rushing so we made a deal with we approached Helheim and we made a deal with Helheim where Helheim would give up this throne to me in 139 and then together the three of us would eat Ubar, Kalem, and Fomoria so eat this column and if certain people took the correct thrones uh, we'd all be about even in throne points, and then we could hash it out as the final three without having to worry about getting backstabbed by a throne rushing Ubar or an invading Fomoria. So that's kind of the how that was hashed out. It was very last minute, so a lot of my orders changed last minute. So my siege chaff is moving up here. Uh, my Van Heers are moving over to this front to prepare. And I sent out the nap ending messages last turn. So we can begin hostilities on turn 35. Additionally, uh, recruiting more Van Heers. And what I'm... Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I'm getting eight Van Heers a turn now, which is really nice by recruiting dwarves in the capital instead of Vanadrots. And I've also stopped all the infrastructure that I was building. I know a lot of it's like half done. Like I need labs in these three. I need a temple in this one. <laughs> I need to upgrade this one to a fortress, this one and this one. So I'm missing like, what is it? 1,500, 1,800, 2,100, 2,500 gold worth of infrastructure so maybe if this all got delayed one more turn i could have gotten everything queued up but that's i guess that's just how it is um so i'm moving a bunch of siege chaff here hopefully to one turn pop this fort uh helheim has already moved in to some of these other places so I guess with that summary, let's go ahead and go through the events. We got some corpsemen. I got a bane, a did a revive king. Got some magic size ancient temple crack tower, which is one pearl and two air. Really nice. And other than that, nothing. And then we had a number of fights. So let's go ahead and check these out. So Fomoria doing a raid. I think we know how that goes. Fomoria trying to take back their capital. So this one's interesting because all these mages are exposed. So if he actually does attack her, this might go well. Just so you can see the Fomorian bless again. Attack skill, chakras, defense skill, and strength. And the reinvig blood surge for Kayla. Are we gonna fly? Oh, maybe. Ouch! That shockwave. Oh, they're they're landing hits. Okay. And. I kind of glazed through this battle when I was uh, setting up my orders for this turn. But yeah, this is really well done. So now they're just racking up experience on units that are running away. Uh, one of the things is, is these units are pillagers. So I kind of wish Kalen would just pillage Fomoria's capital out of spite. That's probably what I would do. But... Maybe, maybe the player is a better person than I am. So 
so they're gonna still take some nutrition. These giants are very tough, even even running. They still have enough attack to a hit, rarely. So, and they're tough enough they generally get a few attempts. So, well done, Kalo. So that's that's a Fomorian king and four mages. So well over 2,000 gold worth of units. These guys are 75 each. All for nowhere close to the same investment. So well done, Caleb. Yeah, really good battle. And then I moved into this lake. So I wasn't sure if this guy... I was really concerned if this guy actually got hit, if this would be enough protection to actually keep him alive. So 10 pro, 15 HP. Because these guys... Uh, they might two-tap him. So that was kind of my main concern. So I'm really relying on this 25 defense skill against 11 attack in the Vine Shield. So as long as they can't harass him down, he should be fine. So he's down, only down to 24 because of the Vine Shield. Yeah, I'm staying up really good. What is this? Entangles. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure if it's like an MR check or just a strength check against like entangle, and the shield just casts entangle all the time around him. So, not completely up to date on the intricacies of bind shield. I know it can get. Uh, broken reasonably easily, reasonably easily by high damage slashing weapons, I believe. So, shouldn't be a problem underwater though, where almost all the enemies are piercing damage. All right, so we got finally took care of that underwater province. Helheim's moving in on Ubar. So we have two thugs here, one with a poison bladder stick and one with a frost brand. Sorry, snake bladder stick. Um, they both have snake rings, so they're immune to the poison and they're immune to shock from the copper plates. One's got a fear effect and they both got vine shields. So this should be a very effective duo. So even if some of these guys run, they might die on the retreat. So well played, Helheim. That was pretty pretty well done. A little lucky those javelins didn't hit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was a lot of misses. Alright, yeah. Well done. So I believe this takes away a throne. And then Fomoria moves in on Calum. And not a whole... Well, the Devi's back here, but it's only got a Shield of Valor. I never did get responses. Uh, I really <laughs> would have loved to craft this guy some gear. I think he could probably could have... That Devi probably could have soloed a good chunk of this army. With, like, some shock resistance... Like a copper plate, or maybe like a bark skin amulet. And I don't know, it comes with built in weapons, so maybe that's all it would need. That and a hat. Yeah, give it a hat, copper plate, maybe a reinvigoration item, and a bark skin amulet. I think the shield. Yeah, the shield takes away a weapon, so I don't know about that. And then these blade ones are completely useless. So, unfortunately, it, they're really only good at killing birds, unfortunately. So.
Corey and King gets a really good position there. All right. So Caleb Lewis is their god. Uh, we get a nature gem, and we finish a couple of fortresses. So what are we doing this turn? Uh, we're making our move on the Ichthids. So same script for this guy, but we've got two water elemental casters. I'm hoping they'll use one gem each, but I have a feeling they won't because they'll take too much fatigue and they'll want a second gem. And this guy to just bring down some Surf Warriors. These Surf Warriors' only job is to prevent this guy from getting harassed down. Or this guy for them. I probably should have this guy uncast. And doing a lot of recruiting. So we've turned off infrastructure and getting guys where we can, you know, where we can. We have more than enough infrastructure to spend all of our gold. So, because we definitely overbuilt it. However, the advantage of overbuilding it is we've got a lot of temples. Ooh, and if I build one more, I can get more sacreds here. So I might have to look at that for my next turn. Um, yeah, I think that'll, that'll be 12 temples. So that should give me another sacred I can recruit. So anyways, that's kind of what we're doing there. We're still getting a little bit more site searching in. We're getting more research in. So we've got Conjuration 5 now. We're moving on Enchantment 4, which gives us Twice Born. And Terracotta Army, maybe, if we need that. Anti-Magic, though, is good. So we've got Anti-Magic. We've got Twice Born. And any magic we can cast with the mercenary that we've hired. Uh, this one, Amor. So. And let's see. I thought it also gave us Cloud Trapeze. Yeah. So <laughs> another prime reason. So now we can magic phase attack. I mean, just in time for this war, which is good. So we're recruiting more guys, more guys. Uh, getting some commanders spammed in here. So I don't know if it's telegraphed too hard, but we're just going to put a bunch of commanders in here to get assassinated, including these guys. And so hopefully the Shaitan will go after them. And then uh, if they land on this fort, we can sail with our army and maybe put the flying boots on this guy. And he can come with. And so the whole army can just shoot across and take on Uber's army. So that's kind of the plan there. I've loaded up uh, my more valuable mages in this province with gems. Everyone who can create an elemental should be able to, to try and defend themselves. I'm not sure how effective it would be, but I'm, I'm hopeful. Just in case the Shaitan nap break. And... Yeah, and I've made another kit. Yeah, and this guy. So I've started building these anti-Uber kits. So we have the Frost Brand, because they have no cold resist, and it's armor piercing. Got the Vine Shield, which might get torn apart, because they have high damage slashing. But we'll have to see how it works. We've got a dragon helmet for morale so that they can fight through those uh, fire shields and repel checks, all that sort of stuff with their one length uh, frost brand. And then we've given the guy some salt so he can use that to stun Jen. So, yeah. And probably gonna hide some mages in the water. <laughs> Uh, we're casting Voice of Team at here, and yeah, so it should be a good time. Looking, you know, feels energizing, get it, you know, gearing up for a war. And yeah, I'll go ahead and 
yeah, we're getting another kit as well, along with the storm spool. So, yeah, I'm going to gear up for turn 33, and I'll see you there.